magazine. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. It's on a new chapter, chapter four in your notes, page 47. Okay, so you're going to be, you're going to be hearing me say a lot of words like rastering, a rasterization. Uh, what it is, is essentially a raster array is an array of pixels. I um, hope you're all aware, but whenever you look at a computer screen, your phone screen, anything like that, what you're actually looking at is lots and lots of squares. It's really, really small. It's very, very hard to tell unless you zoom right in on it, in on your TV, which I don't recommend you do. It's actually quite hard to tell, but your um, displays are made of lots and lots of pixels. Now, these pixels are little squares, which we can colour in um, using um, just three colours. Okay, we use different levels of just three colours. And what it, what it means is when we look at the image as a whole, your brain fools you into thinking you're looking at a, a nice image. So, I mean, hopefully you've all seen things like HDTVs and things like that. You're looking at them and they look pretty good. Um, I think you get even 4K TVs now. And you go to cinema now, you get sort of ridiculously high-res images. Okay, but what it boils down to is we have an array of squares, we colour in the squares. How we colour in the squares is called rasterization. So that's what we're going to be looking at uh, today. So pixels are our little squares. Um, you may often hear me refer to the idealised image. Okay, the idealised image is the image that you want to represent. So, for example, up here, this could be my idealised image. Okay, so there's like a little smiley face. On a raster, that's like an approximation of the idealized image. So the idealized image is what you want to represent. Actually, that one up there, which I called the idealized image, is actually because it's displayed on a computer, uh, computer display, it's actually a rasterized image, but it's using a higher res than this one. Okay, so the idealized image is what the actual image we want to uh, display. Usually these are lines and polygons. Lines and polygons are um, described using vectors. So you have what we call vector graphics and raster graphics. Raster graphics is anything which we sort of shade in the squares. Vector graphics are things which are defined by vectors. So for example, if you do any sort of architecture or engineering drawings, they're described using vectors. And vector graphics are scalable. You can zoom in to the vector graphic and you can sort of scale up and down. You have no loss of clarity of image. But if we were to zoom in onto a um, pixel array, you start to see it sort of gets all blocky. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at is the process of approximating an idealized image on a raster. Okay, um, the raster arrays we'll be dealing with, uh, well actually these are in general what we have is you have an NY by NX by three arrays. So I don't think we've dealt with three dimensional arrays yet. So you've got a 1D array, that's just a vector, just a list of numbers. 2D array, well that's a matrix. So that's like a rectangular uh, array of sort of, in our case, numbers. 3D array is, imagine you've got lots of matrices stacked on top of each other, okay? So you can sort of like in 3D, so you have a, a width, a length, and a height. But in our case, our raster array is NY by NX, so that's our, whatever our size of our screen is, by three, so you have three levels. Each of these levels denote a color. Okay, so in our, uh, well, the actual colors they denote are red, green, and blue. Okay, and I'll explain about red, green, blue in a minute. And in MATLAB, if you have a raster array, you can type the command image, followed by the name of your raster array, and it will display it. Uh, actually, I haven't got it set up yet, but let's show you for example. Take a bit of uh, time to get MATLAB up on my machine. Hello? Where's it gone? Yeah, there. Uh, I did want to show you, but it will it will pop up in a minute. I'll show you it in a minute. 
Okay. So, so to plot graphs of range, well, this is what I was just going to show you. Okay, so if you have a JPEG or anything like that, any image file, in MATLAB, you can actually load in the image file into a raster array. Uh, and that command is called imread. So if you want to read in any photo or any bitmap or any image file you have, so I called it raster. I said raster equals imread and then the name of my photo. So raster is then, if I do a who's raster, what this command does is says how, how much memory has been taken up and what size of array we have. You can see raster is a 240 by 320 by 3. So this means it's 240 high, so that's NY. So it's 240 pixels high, 320 pixels across, and you have three levels. One for red, one for green, one for blue. Okay, so that's your, your raster. Let's see if I can... Uh... No, MATLAB's not there. Fair okay, in that case, I just had a picture of my cat. Those three levels... Our levels of red, green, blue, this is what we call the RGB color model. Red, R for red, G for green, B for blue. And what we do is, in physics, the primary colors are red, green, blue. So when, we, when we're sort of mixing paint, I think the primary colors are yellow, red, and blue, aren't they? Are they yellow, red, blue? No. In physics, it's red, green, blue. That means if you shine, red, green, and blue light, you can make all the different colors of the visible spectrum, just using red, green, and blue, just using different amounts of them. Okay, so for example, down here, I've got a blue, let's say that's a blue light, it doesn't sort of show very well on there, there's a red light, and there's a green light. If I was to shine all three, we get white light. What white light is, is all three colors. So if you ever see a white light, that's combined in all three. If you have no colour in shine, you get black. Okay, if you get a cross between, let's say, uh, blue and red. Okay, what, what, what do we get if we cross blue and red? Uh, we get did it, magenta, which is that colour. Okay, so all of our colours can be defined using just those three. So for example, if we have one bit color, now a bit can either be zero or one. Okay, so we have three colors, and we can have two levels of each color. None of it, or all of it. So two to the power of three is eight. So one bit color, we can generate eight colors. So red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, black, and white, which you might have seen when you, whenever you plot in MATLAB, it uses, by default, one of those eight colors. Okay, let's say we had eight bits per color. If one bit is zero and one, so that's two possible levels. Two bits, uh, it's got four possible levels. How many possible levels has eight bit got? What's two to the power of eight? Two times two times two times two times two, times two etc. It's 256. So you can, so, if you had eight bits of each color, in other words, 256 levels of each color, we can combine them so we have two to the 24 different colors, which is just 16.7 million colors. So just using three colors, 256 levels of each color, we can generate or we can show 16.7 million colors on screen. And that's called true color. Okay. Um, the human eye is estimated can distinguish up to 10 million colors. So we can actually show more colors than we can actually distinguish. I mean, some people, I mean, I've got poor eyesight, some people are better. Um, so we don't bother going past what we call 8-bit uh, color, or some people call it 24-bit color. So, I mean, we reached this in like the 90s, and we don't bother going beyond that, because there's no point, we won't, we won't be able to see it. Okay. So the RGB color model, for each colour, you have 256 levels. So it's a shame that MATLAB's not seems to be working. No, no, I can't show it. But in MATLAB, you do 0 to 255, how much colours you want. And you divide that by 255 <coughs> levels. So that's the RGB colour model. 
Okay, so going back to what we looked at at the first activity, this was our problem. Our problem is we want to be able to draw a line on a raster array. Okay, so here we have a line. Let's say I got a point at AX, AY. So there's my point A. That's at one end of the line. And I've got a point with VX, VY at the other end. I want to just draw a straight line between those on a raster array. So this black line here, that's my idealized image. That's not what we're going to display. We're going to display the approximated rasterized image of that. Okay, and I've shaded in the pixels closest to the line in blue, or some shade of blue there. Um, one thing you're going to note is, and I'm going to use delta x and delta y um, in a minute, is the delta x is a change in the x coordinates from the start position to the end position. So in other words, delta x is the bx coordinate minus the ax coordinate. Delta y, similarly, is a change in the y coordinate. Okay, so this is rasterized in a straight line. Okay, um, if you have um, what we call vectors or vector coordinates, uh, for example, your screen space, that's all in the form of some, when you when you apply all, the, all your alignment and all your um, projection, you have some screen space coordinates. We've got to transfer that to your um, pixel coordinates. So if you've got a screen space coordinate of something, you want to find the equivalent pixel in your raster array. So what we do is, pixels are discrete quantities. You can't have half a pixel. You either have one pixel, you're at pixel one, or you're at pixel two, or pixel three. You can't be at pixel two and a half. So these are discrete quantities. Furthermore, they're natural numbers. Okay, we don't have a zero for pixel. Our pixels start at one and end at either nx or ny. So our screen space coordinates have got to be mapped to our pixel coordinates, which are in the range. Uh, for the x-coordinate, it'll be 1 to nx, and for the y-coordinate, it'll be 1 to ny, and these are whole numbers. Remember that the screen space coordinates are in the range minus 1 to 1, and they were real numbers. So we've got to go from screen space coordinates to our pixel coordinates. Okay, and the way we do that is we scale them using these two expressions here. So x-scale and y-scale are simply the number of coordinates divided by 2 in each direction. Okay, you add one to your screen space coordinates. So adding one means they're then in the range zero to two, which is why you have that divided by two down there. Okay, so you add one to it, so they're in the range zero to two, divide by two, so they're in the range zero to one, and then times by the number of coordinates, uh, sorry, number of pixels in that direction. We have this max here, both of these are the maximum of doing one in that pixel, is because this can give you a zero value. Um, we can't have a zero pixel, our pixels start at one, so hence we have that max term there. So this is mapping from your actual sort of vector coordinates to your pixel coordinates. Okay, um, when we're doing this rationalization, I'll often talk about something called a driving axis. This is simply the axis which we're saying, okay, if we're treat, treating a pixel, let's say we know that we're filling in this pixel, then we check the next pixel, let's say it's the pixel to the right. Okay, your driving axis can be your X or Y. So X is horizontal, Y is vertical. Okay, so it just means we check out one pixel, we say, okay, we're gonna color in that one, then we move one across. If we're moving one across, that means x is our driving axis. Sometimes we may move one up, that means y is our driving axis. Okay, so for most applications, we're going to use x as our driving axis. Okay, so we got this problem, but we want to draw a line. Okay, so mathematically speaking, the equation of a line is y equals mx plus c. And you've all seen this in sort of going back to GCSE and before. 
path. So M is your gradient of your line, C is where it intercepts the y-axis. Okay, um, so straight, what we can do is M is a gradient, which is delta y over delta x, change in y divided by change in x. Okay, and if we know the A coordinate, or we know any coordinate, so we know what AX and AY is, we can calculate what C is. Okay, so if we substitute expressions for M and C into that Cartesian equation, we get this. So this means this is my Y coordinate. If I know the A coordinates, a, AX and AY, I know what M is, that's delta y over delta x. I may not know what x is, but if x is a driving axis, I do. Okay, so we can use the Cartesian of equation of a straight line, and we can develop what's called the direct scan conversion algorithm. Again, it's presented here in kind of a formal way. Okay, so this means we start with a raster array, so that's our pixels. We have two endpoints, A and B, and we have some color which we want to draw the line in. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is round A and B to nearest integers and also do that um, sort of mapping from your actual screen space coordinates to your pixel coordinates. You start off with X and Y being at point A, okay, and then you calculate the gradient. And what we do is if x is our driving axis, we loop along x until we get to bx. So that's starting at ax, and we keep going until our x coordinate is the same as bx. And at that point, we would have finished. Okay, so what we do is for the pixel at x round y, now we have to round it because y could be a real number. We cut pixels of discrete quantities, so they have to be whole numbers. So the raster at x round y, we fill in with color. So that single pixel at x, y, we fill in with whatever color we want. The next x coordinate is simply x plus 1, because we're going to the next pixel to the right. The next y coordinate is found using Cartesian equation of a line. And we do all that once we've exited the while loop when we're finished, and we just return the raster. Some people find it easier to follow algorithms when they're in the flowchart. Okay, so here's a, here's a flowchart again. Um, we have a loop here. So if x is less than or equal to bx, uh, if it is, it means we have to keep going. So when we fill in the pixel, calculate the coordinates of the next pixel, and keep going around until we're finished, and then we end the loop, end the algorithm. Okay, and that's what you get. I've, I've coded out the algorithm. Okay, this is in my lab. And I've just used it to draw various lines of different gradients, just so you can see it sort of gives appearance of straight lines. Okay, that's the DSC algorithm. That does the job, you know. Just a job, what's wrong with it? Everything we need to do in graphics has to be as efficient as possible. I mean, I keep mentioning how whenever we refresh the screen, it norm it's normally done nowadays at 60 times a second. That's a lot of work for the computer to do. The more efficient we can make our algorithms, the better. Okay, so DSC is all right, but it's inefficient. We can get better. So this is, uh, by the way, no one ever uses a DSC algorithm. It's just not used. But we can improve on that in what we call the DDA algorithm, the Digital Differential Analyzer, rather sort of grand term, just DDA. Um, what it recognizes is that since the gradient of a straight line is constant throughout all of the line, the Y coordinate is actually being incremented by the same amount. So if you know what one Y coordinate is, you add something to that Y coordinate to get the ne next one. So what we do is, if we use an x as a driving axis, we simply add one to get the next x coordinate. So this sub subscript i plus one means what's the next one. x subscript i means the current one. So the next coordinate, okay, we just add one to it. The next y coordinate, we just add m to it. All we have to do is add the gradient each time. 
The y coordinate is a real number, i.e., it's got decimals. We need it to be a whole number, so we round it to, to the nearest integer before <coughs> illuminating. Okay, and this cuts down on what we call floating point operations. These are operations that the computer's having to do. <coughs> Things like division is quite is actually quite difficult for a computer to do. I know modern computers will do it within a fraction of a second. But if you compound that over lots and lots of pixels, lots and lots of operations, it does slow it down. Okay, so it's more efficient. Okay, so this algorithm, very, very similar. Pretty much starts exactly the same way. Okay, you calculate the gradient. The only difference is, instead of having to calculate the Cartesian equation of a line, we just add m to whatever our current y coordinate is. Um, not a lot I can say about that. Just keep adding m to y. Okay, so what I want you to do now is turn to page two of this activity. Anybody not got one? I didn't like it. You should open the doors for a minute. <laughs> Oh, just bear with me. I'm just putting the activity up on on uh, Moodle. Oh, come on. I'll, I'll have to do that. Um, I'll do I'll do that in a sec. It's uh, it's not playing nicely. Right. Okay. So what with this activity? What we need to do is send your computer. Okay, what steps does a computer have to do to actually draw this line? So I don't want you to draw the straight line on the raster, I want you to calculate which pixels should be drawn. Okay, so we've got this line going from 1, 1 to 10, 7. So what's the gradient of that line? Anyone? Gradient of the line between two points. What's the difference in the y coordinate? Six. What's the difference in the x coordinate? Nine. So the gradient is two thirds of u. Zoom out. Okay, first thing we do is calculate what your gradient is. And to start off with, our x coordinate and y coordinate is equal to, to our first point. So we have a point, a pixel at x1, y1, which I'm going to shade, coloured in that pixel. And what the algorithm does, it checks whether our x coordinate is um, 
is it up to BEX yet? So BX is 10, well, we're not, we're not reached BX yet. So for the next coordinate, okay, so our next X coordinate is simply one plus one, which is two, obviously. A Y coordinate is one plus T thirds. Five over three. What's five over three rounded to the nearest integer? Two to two. So that's so we've got a pixel now at two two, which is illuminate. Okay, so our next x coordinate is two plus one. Our next y coordinate is 5 over 3 plus 2 thirds. Seven over three. What's seven over three rounded to the nearest integer? It's two point three 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 three. So that's gonna be two. So that's approximately equal to two. Okay, so we have a pixel at three and two. So the x coordinate three, y coordinate two. We shade that in. And we keep going. It can, sort of, it can be a little bit tedious, but quite simple. You should be add one to your, y, uh, to your x coordinate each time, and add m to your y coordinate each time. So our next x coordinate is 4, our next y coordinate is 7 over 3 plus 2 thirds. Well that's 9 over 3, so that's 3. So we're at 4 and 3. Okay. And we keep going. So 11 over 3. That's three point six 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 six, etc. Because twelve over three would be four. Eleven over three, pretty quite close. Okay, so that's at five four. That's going to be that pixel. Okay, the next one five plus one is six. Eleven over three plus two over three. With 13 over 3. Again, closest integer is 4. So we're at 6, 4. Okay, add 1 to x. So we have 7. Add 2 thirds to 13. Over three, and we get fifteen over three, which is obviously five. So we're at seven five now. Okay, keep going. So eight and six. There. Nine and six, and finally x equals ten, y equals nineteen over three plus two over three, which is exactly equal to seven, so ten and seven. Okay, that was dead easy. Um, but this is algorithmic. It's, we haven't had to use any form of sight, or right, I've had to um, shade in the pixels, but as far as computers are concerned, that's just a coordinate on an array. Okay, I haven't had to use any sort of reason, you know, any sort of um, sight 
based reasoning are just pure number crunching. And we've got our line on our raster array. So do similar, but do for the second line, which is between 4, 1, and 8, 10. 10 minus 1, 8 minus 4. 9 over 5. 9 over 5, 9 over 4. If you've got more than one colour of pen or pencil or what have you, I suggest you do the second one in a different colour. I haven't, so I'm just going to use um, crosses or something like that. Okay, so we're starting off at 4-1. Four, 4-1. One. Four, one. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use a cross, just so it's different for the second line. So my next... X coordinate is 5, my next Y coordinate is 1 plus 9 over 4, 13 over 4, which is roughly equal to 3. So 5, 3 there. Next one. 13 over 4 plus 9 over 4, 22 over 4, 22 over 4. A five and a half. Yeah. 22 over 4 is 5 and a half, which rounds to 6. So we're at 6. Uh, 6, which is there. It's equal to 7. Y is the previous Y coordinate plus 9 over 4. So we've got 31 over 4. What's that closest to? 8. So we're now at 7, 8. And finally, x equals 8, y is 31 over 4, which is the current y coordinate, plus 9 over 4, which is 40 over 4, which is 10. Great. Okay. That sort of all makes sense. When you use the x as a driving axis, you just add one to your x coordinate. For the DDA algorithm, you just add m to your y coordinate, and that gives you a new step through the algorithm that way. Can anybody notice the problem with b? Our second line we drew, anybody spot a problem? Does it look like a line? It's got gaps in it, like a dashed line. We'll come back to that problem. Okay, this is a problem for your assignment. What are we up to? 10? Assign, your assignment 10 um, will require you to overcome that problem. Okay, so we'll come back to that. Right. Okay, so that's the DDA algorithm. Very, very simple. Reason I just keep have to resize this. Okay, DDA, very, very simple, very, very easy. We don't use it. Okay, so, uh, well, actually, we do use it in some cases, but it's there is a better one. Okay, and this better one is one which you're going to do for your assignment. This is called Greshenin's algorithm. And it's pretty much, it was developed in the late 60s, hasn't been improved upon since. It is sort of um, the best sort of line during algorithm. Um, it uses what we call integer only arithmetic. It only ever uses whole numbers, which means it's very, very fast. When computers have to mess about with real numbers, i.e., decimals, it slows them down. Okay? When computers are just dealing with integers, just like we, we do, it's easy for us to, to do arithmetic using integers, it's, it's faster. Okay, um, what Bresham's algorithm does is for each 
uh, pixel, it uses the error between um, the pixel and the idealized image. Okay, so if you think about it, as we step along the X direction, okay, we, we're choosing between two pixels in the Y direction. We have an error associated for each pixel, okay, and we choose the one with the smallest error. Okay, so we have logic rather than calculations determining which pixel we illuminate. So here, here's a very simplified diagram. Let's say we have a very sort of zoomed in on a raster array. Here is my idealized image, which is that line. Okay, so I want to draw um, that line using these pixels. And let's say this pixel here at coordinates x, y has already been chosen. So we know that's been illuminated. Okay, if we step along one to, to the right, so we're at x, i plus one, we have a choice between two pixels. I've called them east pixel and the northeast pixel for obvious reasons. So that's a pixel to the east. Above it is a pixel to the northeast. So we know what this one is. This one's its east neighbor. That one's its northeast neighbor. And what we have is we have the distance from the center of that pixel to the ideal, idealized line, and I've called that DE. And we have also the distance from the center of the northeast pixel to the idealized line, and that's DNE. So you can see from that, DNE is smaller than DE. So because it's smaller, we're better off illuminating the pixel above uh, to the northeast rather than the pixel to the east. Okay, so that's what this means down here. Okay, so we have a choice between our next y pixel. So this, our current y coordinate is y i. Our next y coordinate, y i plus one, is equal to y i if the distance between the east pixel, the center of the east pixel, and the line is less than that of the northeast pixel. Or we go up one otherwise. Okay, so now we're going to have to, what we want to do is we want to derive some expressions for the error. Okay, so I'm going to let x dash y dash be the actual coordinates on the line, on the idealized line, and x, y are going to be our pixel coordinates. So DE is the actual y coordinate minus yi. Okay, so that's got a, that's yi. And that's your actual y coordinate there. So that's that distance. DNE, the northeast, is yi plus one. So that's that coordinate minus y dash. And what we do is we define an error denoted here by epsilon. And the error is the distance from the east pixel to the line minus the distance from the northeast pixel to the line. Now what that means is if the error is, is negative, okay, if the error is negative, that means DNE must be larger than DE. So if the error is negative, we go to the east pixel. So we don't go up, we go across. However, if the error is positive, we go up one. So we go to the northeast pixel. Okay, so Rather than comparing distances, which will be, um, you know, they'll be real numbers, we're comparing an error. If it's positive, we go up. If it's negative, we don't go up, we go across. Okay, so that's how brushing an algorithm works. Okay, so let's return the equation of a straight line. Y equals nx plus c, or I've written m as delta y over delta x. Okay. If we assume that our pixel at x i y i has been illuminated, then this is our error. Okay, that's from here. Okay, that's just subtracting those two. Okay. So that's two y dash minus two y i minus one. Well, y dash is equal to this, so I substitute that in there. Okay, uh, x dash 
is x i plus one because we're at the, we want to know what the error is at the next x coordinate. Okay, if I uh, multiply all of that out, we get this expression here. Okay, so I've multiplied it all out and I've multiplied both sides by delta x. Now, what I'm going to do is to simplify things a little bit. I'm going to say let our error function be equal to delta x times epsilon. That just makes things easier. Okay, just makes things a lot neater. So we have a function given any coordinate x and y. This is the error between that coordinate and our idealized line. Okay, and we have it in terms of um, delta x and delta y, which we know because that's the distance between the start and end points of our line. And xi and yi, which we also know because we just that's our current position in Nebraska. So we know all of the stuff on the right hand side. Okay, and that will give us an error. Okay, what we don't actually do in the algorithm is calculate this at each step. Too much work. Because we've got a straight line, all we do is we update the error depending on whether we went to the east pixel or whether we went to the northeast pixel. So we have an error value, and we're just adding something to it. Okay, so what do I have to add to our error value? So this is what we call delta epsilon, or change in error. So that's our error function. So this is just derived from the um, Cartesian equation of a line. The change in error, from the pixel at x i y i to the pixel at x i plus one, and then I've got a y subscript i plus one. I know what this is. This one could be one of two values. So I've, I've written x subscript i plus one because I don't know which value that's going to be yet. Okay, so error at the next pixel minus error at the current pixel, that'll be my change in error. Okay, well, if we plug all of that into this error function, so for example, I've got 2xi delta y, well, in this case, xi is xi plus 1. And we've got minus 2yi delta x, well, here, yi is yi plus 1, so that's there. So this line is the error at the next pixel, this line is the error at the current pixel. Do a bit of algebra. Okay, lots of cancelling out. And we end up with this expression. Now we have this yi plus one. We don't know what that is yet. It depends upon the value of the error. So if we chosen to go to the east pixel, okay, so let's let's say we took the error was negative, so therefore we're going to the east pixel. Our y coordinate at our next pixel is just going to be equal to the current y coordinate. So we just got a cross. We haven't added anything to it. So what I do here is we replace yi plus 1 with simply yi. Okay, and that simplifies down to 2 delta y. What if we chose to go to the northeast pixel? What if the error was positive? If the error is positive, our next y coordinate is going to be the current one plus one, because we stepped up. Okay, so we replace the yi plus one here with um, yi plus one. And if we uh, substitute it in, simplify, we get 2 delta y minus 2 delta x. So notice that the change in errors are constant. Delta y and delta x is calculated in the same for all across the line. So these two changes and errors can be calculated at the beginning. Okay, so we know by how much we need to change our error. What about the first error? Okay, which is what we call the initial error. So if I rearrange the Cartesian equation of a straight line to make C the subject, okay, we, do, we get this, very simple. And I substitute this into the error function. So by that I mean here. Can you see we have this C here? 
this C cancelled out um, when we did this subtraction, but for the first error, we've only got one, so that C is still there. So we replace that C with this expression here. So there we are, that C gets replaced with that expression. Do some cancelling out, simplify, and we get our initial value is 2 delta Y minus delta X. Okay, right. That's quite a lot to take in. That's quite a lot sort of, of um, derivation. So just sort of summarize. You have a line going from A to B. Delta X is a change across the X coordinate. Delta Y is a change across the Y coordinate. You initially calculate your initial error, which is a two times delta Y minus delta X. You use that error to determine which of the next two pixels we're going to go to. If the error is negative, we move to the east and we add delta epsilon e to our error, where delta epsilon e is just 2 to <coughs> y. If the error is positive, we move to the northeast and we add this to our error. Okay, so all we're doing is adding something to our error. We're checking whether the error is positive or negative to decide. Now, all these calculations, delta y, delta x, all the errors, they're going to be whole numbers. We're, we're never using any real numbers. So this is integer only, so it's very, very fast. Okay, that's sort of the algorithm. Again, it's more complicated to read it in that way than doing it. So we start off, again, the same as last time, round a and b to the nearest integers. Start off at your, x, uh, your a coordinates. Calculate what your delta x and delta y are, and then you calculate your initial error and your change in errors. Color in the, the current, current pixel. If the error is negative, you add, you change the error for the east, if we went to the east. If it's positive, you change the error if we went to the northeast and add one to the y coordinates. So that's going at one. Okay. Right, so what I want you to do is if you turn over to uh, question three, we're going to do the same thing but using Brescianums, and you'll see how easy it is. the algorithm and draw the lines using Brescian's algorithm. First thing we need to do, calculate delta x. The delta x is 9, delta y is 6. So that's just a change in x coordinates and the change in y coordinates. So 10 minus 1 and 7 minus 1. Make sure I've got the right. Uh... Okay, so we initialize the, the error is going to be um, 2 delta y minus delta x. So 2 times 6 minus 9. So our initial error is 2 times delta y, so 2 times 6 minus delta x. Is minus 9, which is 12 minus 9, which is 3. You can also calculate what's the change in error if you went to the east pixel. Okay, well, according to Brescian's algorithm, that's just 2 delta y. Uh, what about if we went to the northeast pixel, calculate the change in error, and if we went to the northeast pixel, and that is 2 delta y minus 2 delta x. That's going to be 2 times 6 minus 2 times 9. So that's 12 minus 18, so it's minus 6. 
That's all the information we need to start with. Okay, so we start with our coordinate at x is 1, y is 1, and we shade it. Our error is 3, which is positive or negative. Obviously, it's positive. Therefore, we go to the northeast. Okay. So I'm going to go to the northeast, and our error is going to become 3 plus minus 6. You see that there? So I'm adding. Delta E and E. 3 minus 6, so it should be minus 3. Okay, so I shade in our current pixel. I check to see where our next pixel is going to be. Well, error is positive, so I'll go to the northeast, and then I change the error. So for the next pixel, x is going to be equal to 2, y is going to be equal to 2. Because we're going to the northeast pixel. Okay. And our error is now minus 3. That's negative. So we go to the east pixel. Okay, but we've got to update the error. Okay. So our error is now minus 3 plus the change in the error if we went to the east pixel. And that's uh, plus 12. Okay, so that's going to be plus 12, so that gives me 9. Okay. So the east pixel is at x equals 3, y equals 2. See that one. Error is equal to 9, which is positive. We go to the northeast. And update the error. So it's 9. And if we go to the, because uh, we've gone to the northeast, we have to subtract 6 from it. So our error goes back to 3. Okay, keep going. Okay, so the northeast pixel is at 4 and 3. The error was equal to 3, which is positive, so again we go to northeast. And again we have to subtract 6 from 3. So notice all of these are whole numbers, haven't had to sort of calculate fractions at all. So the northeast pixel is at 5, 4. The error is minus 3, negative, so we go to the east. And we update minus 3 by adding 6 to it, to be 3. Also, I add 12 to it, don't we? Give me 9. And you start to notice the errors are actually repeating themselves. Go to the east pixel. So that's x at 6, y is at 4, the error is 9, it's positive. So next time go to the northeast. And we subtract 6 from the error because that's a change in error. We go to the northeast. Or there. So if we went to the northeast, we've got x equals 7, y equals 5. The error is 3, which is positive, so again go to the northeast. And 
and we change the error by adding minus six to it to give me minus three. Okay. There. And if you carry on, you end up at ten seven. If you compare that to the DDA algorithm, exactly the same pixels have been shaded. Okay, exactly the same pixels have been shaded. This one, or I, I've written more down for this one, but only just to sort of show you or justify my steps. But all the um, all, all I'm doing is adding. I'm, all I'm doing is checking whether my error is positive or negative, and adding something to the error depending on whether it's positive or negative. Okay, so it's a very simple, very efficient algorithm. And like I say, it hasn't been approved upon. So this is a very quick way of drawing lines on a graph set. Okay, uh, just some, one thing which I haven't sort of put on the slides, I'm just going to go back to the um, document camera, is on page 59, I've included some, uh, oops, MATLAB code, just to sort of show you, it's actually quite simple. Now this MATLAB code is for the, um, a function which given a raster, so your input to this function is raster A, B, colour. A are just two coordinates, X and Y, for your start point, B are two coordinates, X and Y, for your end point. Color is three values, RGB for your color. Okay, so if you, oh, trying to do it on there. So if we, we step through it, we start off by rounding your coordinates, initialize X and Y to be start point A, calculate delta X and delta Y, which I put the X and DY here, Calculate your initial error, calculate the change in error for the east and change in error for the northeast. Okay. Loop along the driving axis so while your x coordinate is less than your last x coordinate. So B1 is your x coordinate of point B. You illuminate the pixel. By the way, the reason it says yx is because that's how um, rasters work. Okay, we start, think of a matrix, you go row then column. Okay, so you go y coordinate then x coordinate. So that, that's why it's that way around. Okay. If the error is negative, add delta epsilon e to it. Else, if the error is positive, add delta epsilon n e to it. And we also add 1 to y because we've gone to the northeast. And we add 1 to x to increment by x. Okay, so if you were to type that out, you can use that to actually draw your lines on a raster. Your assignment 10, is that's what you're going to have to do. Okay, you're going to have to use this to draw some lines. You're actually going to have to modify this slightly, because it doesn't work for all cases. Right, so that's a brush in algorithm. Okay, so we saw the DDA algorithm uh, in, the, in the activity. It didn't work for that, for that line, that second line. And if we'd have tried it for the brush in activity for the second line, it wouldn't have worked. Okay, so our, at the moment, our algorithms only work for, in special cases. And they only work in this case, where your line it's got a positive shallow gradient. 
So here's the start point, A. Here's the end point, B. If your gradient is less than 1, and it's positive, our Bresenims and DDA work. As soon as we go anywhere else around that circle, so let's say B was up here, okay, we'd have a steep positive line. It wouldn't work. Anywhere on the left-hand side, we're, we're drawing from, left, from right to left. Now, we're adding one to our x-coordinate each time. So we can't draw lines which go from right, from right to left. We also can't draw lines that go negative gradient, which go down. So at the moment, we can only draw lines which have a shallow positive gradient. So there's two problems here. Well, actually, there's three. First problem is drawing lines right to left. The second problem is drawing steep lines. The third problem is drawing negative slope lines. Okay, so three problems we're going to have to overcome. The easiest problem to overcome is drawing lines right to left. So here, if this is our start point, and let's say that's our end point, we can't draw that line going that way, but we can draw this line. Okay, so all we do is if we encounter a line, which is drawing from right to left, we simply swap the coordinates around. So A is swapped with B. That's all we have to do, that's that problem solved. Okay, but what if you try and draw, for example, a DDA algorithm is trying to draw a steep line, you start to get gaps appearing, and we saw that in the activity. Now why is that? Okay, what went wrong? Well, on the left, you can see, if we use x as a driving axis, okay, our delta x for a steep line is less than delta y. So for a single step across delta x, we have a greater step up in delta y. So you end up leapfrogging or end up missing out pixels. Well, what if we were to go up? before we go across. So here we're going across, then up. But if we went up, and then we'll go across, we don't get that gap. <coughs> so for the DBA algorithm, all we do is we choose Y to be the driving axis if we have a steep line. Okay, so we have to make a choice. Remember the driving axis is one we, we could just add in by one for each step. So if delta x is greater than delta y, in other words, we have a shallow line, we've got a gradient less than 1, we choose x as a driving axis, else we choose y. So if x is a driving axis, we have the standard DDA. Add m to y, add 1 to x. If y is chosen as a driving axis, and we're going uphill, so in other words, um, a y is less than b y, so we're going up. Okay, we add one to y because now y is our driving axis, and we add one over m to x because it's the reciprocal. Else, if we had a steep line but going downhill, we subtract one from y because we're going downhill, and we subtract one over m. From X. And that solves those three problems. Unfortunately, it overcomplicates your algorithm. I haven't bothered breaking down the algorithm, I just show you the flowchart. So, what we have here is we have, we have to decide whether we're going from right to left. So, if your A coordinate is to the right of your B coordinate, we just simply swap them around. Then you've got to decide okay, well, is your um, gradient less than one? If it is, we go to this loop, which is your standard DDA loop. If the gradient isn't less than 1, and the gradient's positive, we're going uphill, which is this loop. Else, the gradient's negative, uh, we're going downhill, which is this loop. So, it's a bit of logic in there, the if statements, if you were to code that up. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on DDA because your assignment is to do with Breschen's algorithm. Now, for negative slopes, 
for Breshkin's algorithm, we have a choice between a pixel to the east and a pixel to the southeast. So rather than going northeast, we're going southeast. Now, if I was to go through all that derivation before, we end up with these expressions for the error. There's the initial error. That's a change in error if it went to the east. That's a change in error if it went to the southeast. Now, if we compare them to these, which are the errors for going uphill, so those are the errors for going downhill. These are the errors for going uphill. You notice they're very, very similar. The only change is there's a negative in front of the two delta y. So all we have to do is change the sign of delta y, which makes sense because rather than delta y being positive, it's then negative. Okay, so these are the steps, and this is essentially telling you what you need to do for um, assignment 10. I think it's assignment 10. Okay, if the change in the x coordinate with the modulus, so that's just taking the positive value, is less than the change in the y coordinate, we swap x and y around. Okay, I'll explain why that is in a minute. So we swap the x and y coordinates. So your ax becomes ay, and your ay becomes ax, and the same for b. And we flag it up, so we record the fact that we swap those coordinates around. So I, I call my flag steep. So set steep equals to 1. Just say, yep, I've swapped them around. If we haven't swapped them around, set steep equal to 0 to show that they haven't been swapped. If A is to the right of B, simply swap A and B. If A is above B, then set delta Y is equal to minus delta Y. So that means if we're going downhill, we simply reverse the sign of delta Y. And I introduce, or we introduce, a variable called Y inc, stands for Y increment, and that's minus 1. So rather than incrementing y by 1 each time, we want to go up, we increment y by minus 1, so we go down. Okay, so those are the three things you have to do before um, we step into the loop. When we're in the loop, if steep equals 0, we just illuminate our raster x, y as normal. If steep is equal to 1, what that would have mean is we would have swapped our x and y coordinates at the beginning. So we have to illuminate raster y, x, just to swap them back. And then when you update the y coordinate, we update y with y in. So this slide is essentially telling you how to do your assignment 10. Okay. And that's sort of a weird sort of star shape thing. What I've done there is all of those lines have got a start point at 50-50 which is in the middle, and I've just calculated some end point to be around in a circle. So you can see, you can see that the modified Brechtian algorithm in this way is able to deal with um, lines in any direction. Okay, what I advise you to do, and this looks quite complicated, but don't worry, you just step through it, is check out this flow diagram, which is on page 65. This is the modified Brechtian's algorithm. Okay, so for your assignment, and I'll bring up the assignment in a minute, you can start with this code, which I'll put up on MATLAB, um, it's on Moodle. That's your code for your standard Brechtian's. Then you've got to edit it so that it can draw lines in any direction. And just follow this flow diagram down, okay, and make those changes. Right. Okay, um, as you can see here, what I've done is I've used, I've got our virtual world and I've rasterized it. So this is the virtual world I've been using as an example. And what I've done here is all those lines are just drawn using pixels. And that's what the computer does. Okay, so when, when you get the virtual world, okay, it has to display it on the screen, and it does so using rasterization. 
Right. Um, we're going to we're going to have a break in a second. But what I wanted to do just before then is if I pop over to Moodle again. Um, let's bring up the assignments. All right, let's go to oh, where's all the rest of Simon? Clipping with that binary space partitioning. Okay, okay, raster in lines. So the raster in lines, what I've said is a five pointed star is inscribed in a circle. Centered at coordinates 5, 5 with radius 4 units. Given that one of the points is at the 12 o'clock position, calculate the coordinates and verses of the other five points. That's just pen and calculator exercise. We're going to use a raster of 200 by 200 pixels. Given that the screen has a raster array represents 10 by 10 units, Calculate the raster coordinates corresponding to the verses at the five points. Again, that's pen and, that's pen and calculator stuff. Part C is write a MATLAB program that uses Bresham's algorithm to draw the star. Okay, and what shown in the figure below. Okay, so there's my five-pointed star. Okay, ignore the circle for now. So you can see there's a five-pointed star, and it has lines going in all directions. Those are drawn using Bresham's algorithm. Okay, so that's the assignment 10. Okay. Right, it's, uh, I think it's time for a break. So do you want a 20-minute break? So if you're back here by quarter two. Yeah, 20 minutes. I've got more to go through. <laughs> also notice I haven't sent around signing sheet yet. <laughs> 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 